Basically, in Sufism, there is, there is a belief to be a Walls, Qutub, Abdal, Wali, Nafiyah, right? Yes. Uh, what is the need for them? Why do Allah need them in the okay. world um, as a human being to take these places? And mm -hmm. why if you know someone dies, someone else takes the role? Uh, that's all this. Okay, Mashallah, that's a Thank good you. question. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Brother Ali, for calling in with that question. Yes, yeah, so you know this uh, concept of Abdal and Budala and uh, Qutb and Ghoth and Imams and Autad, these are just terminologies uh, which is mainly used uh, by Sufi uh, people, by Sufis. So uh, before answering to the question why do we need it, just I wanted to touch upon do we believe in them or not. So it is two groups. Okay. So uh, in the past the vast majority used to believe on them. Okay, but as far as I know in the contemporary century uh, vast majority actually they do not believe in them <clears throat> but the disagreement is actually based on the ahadith who have big uh, n big number of ahadith big number of ahadith in which um, uh, Prophet Muhammad mentions about 40 like a uh, people uh, whose heart uh, looks like the heart of Prophet Ibrahim and that type of things and the most of these ahadith are weak, but there are some of them are sahih and some of them are hasan. Okay, so the scholars who say that uh, there, there are these uh, saints, different categories of a saints, uh, they do exist and that's confirmed by hadith, and then they quote all of them ahadith. So they say, even if there will be several weak ahadith, if they come together, it gives strength. So what do you think about uh, the ahadith in which, which is, uh, more than 30 weak ahadith and few hasan and one sahih hadith. Okay, so they say all of them will give uh, uh, strength to the statement of the Prophet Muhammad in here. Okay, but the second category of scholars, they just disregard. And also the hadith which is confirmed to be sahih and hasan, they just disregard them. Okay, so they say there is no such a thing as abdal and uh, awtad and etc. So, but in terms of a name, so there are big names from both sides. Okay, so for example, uh, Imam Bukhari, uh, so according to the Muhaddithin, Imam Bukhari was one of the Abdal, like Imam Muslim was one of the, so just go to the biography of the Muhaddithin, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, so Muhaddithin confirmed that Muhaddith people used to believe that he was one of the Abdal, so just, it's the biography of the Muhaddithin is full by these type of things. So. Muhaddithin, they actually used to believe in the Abdal. Uh, so, for example, Abu Abdul Rahman Sulami, I would call him as, you can say, uh, Imam of Salafism, contemporary Salafism, as well as he is very highly respected in Sufism. Okay, and Ibn Taymiyyah, he uh, made controversial statement in some of his uh, works. He actually believes he confirms the existence of Abdal and Autad, and in some of other works. He just rejects them. So from here I can maybe say that uh, most likely um, he changed his uh, mind during his lifetime. Which came first, God knows. Okay, But from my own understanding, most likely before he used to believe on existence of, uh, uh, on existence of uh, um, Abdal and this awliya and different things, but maybe toward the end of his life he just changed his mind. because. Um, initially, he is grand student of Abdul Qadir Jailani, and we know who is this guy called Abdul Qadir Jailani. He's humbly, no doubt, and even in the Aqidah, he's humbly. So he criticizes the Hanafi Aqidah, criticizes the Ashari Aqidah. But anyway, he is uh, um, like uh, considered to be uh, one of the uh, very famous Sufis, especially in subcontinent. He is the Sufi number one. For example, in uh, Central Asia and in. Uh, maybe Turkey, uh, maybe Shah Naqshban, uh, Imam Muhammad Bahauddin Naqshban is the most famous, but in subcontinent, Abdul Qadir Jalani is, and he is the grand teacher of Ibn Taymiyyah. So most likely, in my own understanding, Ibn Taymiyyah first used to believe on these type of things in the beginning stage of his life, and toward the end uh, of his life, he just came to conclusion that it does not exist. So it's just disputed issue, disagreed upon issue. Okay. But what are these things? Look, I mean, um, the Sufi heritage, um, the inheritance of the Sufi works, the Sufi heritage, it is so not reliable. 
Okay, for example, Hanafi fiqh or Shafi'i fiqh, you can catch some, like you can go to the bottom of it because there are some certain principles, okay, and there are some certain reliable sources here. There. But what about the Sufi heritage? Because they say their main claim is knowledge of Tasawuf is taken by practicing from the direct teachers, okay. So books, they disregard the books, they don't respect the books, and even they have this terminology called uh, ulama ur rusum ulama ur rusum is um, the, their offensive statement ulama ur rusum means the scholars of the zahir religion those who uh, for example learn from the books okay so that's why maybe when you go to the sufi works sufi books it's quite you can say controversial things okay some of them are even uh, you can say heretic uh, beliefs because they do not believe in the books, okay? You can very hardly find some genuine, reliable book uh, of the Sufis, okay? Because they, uh, don't, they don't pass on their knowledge like that, okay? So, like a beginning, uh, you can say fundamental knowledge, they take it from each other, but further, they say it comes by itself. Okay, so then how to understand the book? So there is no any place for book in their, you can say, uh, uh, field. So that's why the books of Sufi is not reliable. Okay, even we have this famous uh, uh, um, uh, Sufi scholar, Maliki Ashari, whose name was uh, uh, Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn al-Arabi, rahimahullah. So even he by himself, he said that we, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ يَحْرُمُ النَّظَرُ فِي كُتُبِنَا means we are that type of people that looking and reading our books is prohibited. Okay, so that's why it's very difficult. So you will never get to the bottom of the, you can say, of these Sufi practices through the books. Okay, so if you want to find out what exactly do they do and what exactly do they believe, you have to practice. So by practicing, you will see what they know. Yeah, so that's so it's the learning through doing. Yeah, n not like uh, through the papers and ink and like that. Yeah, mm, yeah. and and it's like that for particular.